much in gratitude to you both, and in gratitude for all of you for coming here and supporting our endeavor here, and I hope you enjoy. And we're going to start with lighting a candle to begin, because this is a very auspicious evening. We have eight natural holidays in the year that are, every day is a holy day, right? And there are times, just like with acupuncture, there are certain points that do communicate in certain ways, and this is one of them. So we're going to be celebrating that tonight. So I'm going to light this light, and this is, um, we're honoring the light as it's, it's moving now from being in dominance to uh, giving way to greater and greater dark. And I am celebrating the dark. I think the dark is very, very holy. There we go as we celebrate the light. And uh, in the Huichol tradition, it's grandfather fire. And they have a wonderful, wonderful meditation that's so simple. So I'm going to start off giving you that gift that I learned from Brant Secunda. And he shares here in his monthly meetings here. We're very lucky here in Santa Cruz that we have so many amazing teachers. and. You can look at a candle, and if you have fear, you breathe the light into your throat. And if you have jealousy, you breathe the light into your heart. And if you have, in your gut, you can, for anger, you can breathe the, the light, the flame, into your heart. You can even imagine it, but it's even more potent with a, a flame or candle or fire. And it's recommended that you don't do when you're doing one, you stay with that one for that particular duration of time that you're doing the meditation. It's very powerful. So here we are, and we have all these skeins of yarn are for the five elements. And we're going to take a seat here, and we're going we're to start with a meditation. And uh, before even uh, beginning... What I like to say, and this is what I like to say with my clients, respect the wisdom within you. I respect the wisdom within you. And anything that is said here, if you are not in accord with it, leave it outside. Take only what you resonate with. And if there's something new, you can be with it and see if there's perhaps something that you can bring in. I think we have a little bit of... of um, Reverb here, or not a little, yeah, hot, hot mic. <laughs> hot mic. And um, for instance, I'm gonna, we're going to be bringing in the directions. And in different traditions, even in the Native Americans, they do not, they're not all in agreement about what each direction stands for. And in Tibetan Buddhism, it's a whole different array. And so to know that, so that there's not a dogma, and if I say that something's happening in the East and you're going, oh my God, I know that's supposed to be in the West or whatever, just know, yeah, it, there's more than one way to, uh, to relate to this all, okay? Ah, so I invite you, if you like, to uncross your arms and legs and to close your eyes if you'd like to. I like to close my eyes. What's that? And turn off your cell phones. Oh, and turn off your cell phones. Okay. <laughs> and uh, this particular meditation is based on the unity meditation that is created by Sri Yukteswar. And uh, it turns out that one of another amazing teacher, whoops. <laughs> What's, what's, what's his name, Melchizedek, the first name of the sacred geometry? Dranvalo Melchizedek. He was about to go on in a big auditorium with hundreds and hundreds of people, and he always meditated prior to his um, beginning to you know, share his wisdom. And Sri Yukteswar appeared to him. 
and gave him this meditation. <laughs> and he shared it, and he had amazing experience with people in the audience that didn't want to come out. We're not going to, so I don't invite you to go into trance so that you're gone for the night. But I want you to know that the basis of what I'm offering is coming from that unity meditation, and it's really appropriate to offer it here in this space where we come on a regular basis to receive the wisdom of Sri Yukteswar through the wonderful channeling. Okay, so, all right, so if you could like, close your eyes and let's begin with a deep breath into the now and bringing that breath into the heart. And as we breathe out, just letting go of the concerns of the world concerns, whatever getting here, whatever shape you're in or aren't in. And just one more time, breathing into the heart. And breathing into loving your heart, yourself, your life. This moment, which will never be replicated. And from your heart, allowing your awareness to travel down your spine and to keep going into the heart of Mother Earth. You can just imagine this. You could see it as a ribbon of light, like your spine just goes down and plugs in, or just any way, but with that intention to be connected with the heart of Mother Earth. And to imagine that you're in a really, really beautiful place. You might want to recall even another place from another environs that has been very special to you. On a beach, on a mountain, in a meadow, by flowers, whatever it may be. Or I like to invite you to bring whatever those spaces are into this space and to really just cherish the beauty of this here and now space. And send that love from your heart and your appreciation and gratitude to Mother Earth right to her heart, appreciating her, loving her. And then just allowing yourself to receive her love back to you. So just being in the now and breathing into your heart and just noticing. For we are not separate from Mother Earth. We are a cell of Mother Gaia. And with that love now back in your heart, merged with her heart, sending that love vertically up through your spine, out through your crown, and you can imagine to the sun, or you can imagine the sun below Mother Earth feeling us in this whole solar system, in the whole, this whole constellation, this Milky Way galaxy. And sending your love to the stars, to the sky realm, to the sun. And also then just waiting and receiving that love coming back. And I love to feel these loves merging in my heart. I sometimes, I, I, I love the, the visual of, in Tibetan Buddhism, there's the, the male and the female deities that are in union. And it's so perfect for this day of equinox, the divine feminine and divine masculine and perfect balance. And if you like, extending in front of you, you can imagine east and the rising of the sun and honoring that direction and the element of fire and bringing in that enthusiasm, spontaneity, new life, spring energy. And behind, you can imagine the west and if you like, you can think of that as being a place of air, 
the setting sun like now we're in Libra and we're honoring Venus and we're invoking Venus love and beauty and harmony and dynamic balance and equality and justice knowing that this is all possible and then if you like to your right imagining the south and the beautiful waters <coughs> in the Wichel <coughs> tradition the waters represent beauty and I think of the waters as the flowing divine life as we know from indigenous peoples water is life and in the north the elders the earth the animals the sensate world, the world of sacred sensing. And in the Huichol, the north is a place of the earth and love. And we're in the middle of that, so that's the fifth direction. So the all that isness, the great quintessence, the fifth element. And that coupled with the above and below, and we have the number seven, a number often associated with the divine. And so we call in all of our spirit guides, the divine source, the sacred oneness, teachers, whoever of that vibration of sacred love, awakening, healing, peace for us and for all beings, for Mother Earth to be with us tonight. And we dedicate and have as intention that our being together be an alchemical gifting to us and to Mother Earth and to all that we envision as being possible for the greatest benefit of all beings. And we rejoice and give thanks and say, and so it is, if you wish to say it with us. So it is. Woo! Woo! Yay! So, so yes, so we're here to celebrate. <laughs> and um, I made notes because there's a lot that I want to say and there's a lot I want to share. And I have a tendency to get so in the moment I can really forget. And um, honoring the she. <laughs> The she includes the he. It's all inclusive. It's interesting that the he chops off the s, so chops off the female. Hmm? And they can coincide very beautifully. So she, we, 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 all the way home. <laughs> with the own. <laughs> so this is called a cosmic, cosmic cabaret, and my AKA is Isabel Ringing. <laughs> And that came to me a long time ago. So this is a fruition of a dream. And uh, in, in Tibetan Buddhism, the bell represents uh, the, the female, the emptiness. And that, of course, includes everything. So the dream is, too, for all-inclusive, no one left out. And none is an interesting word because, again, you get the no and the one. So uh, we went a happy Gaia. <laughs> and this is what came to me in contemplating the night. We bless our bodies, bless this earth, blessed to be a blessing. We bring delight and mirth. We are love, we are light. We're the ones that make it all right with no one left out. The gifts in the present, now's the time. Open your heart to the truth divine. So we're celebrating Lots going on. We didn't know when the state was selected. We knew it was going to be equinox, but we didn't know it was going to be this week with all this enormous response for the climate, galvanized primarily, really, by Greta Thunberg. And um, so, as we said earlier, I'm also an astrologer, and I couldn't help but take a glance at what was going on in her chart. And it's astounding because Pluto is exactly to the degree on her moon. 
A moon in a person's chart really represents your personal self, your body, your, often it's, you know, the way the public sees you too, it can be, you know, and, um, and for her, the moon's in the 10th house, which is the house of the public. And Pluto is transformation. Death, this is only happens once in a lifetime because the, the, the transit of Pluto takes so long. And it's at the exact degree while she today was at the UN. Right? I mean, woo! And her north node, which is the direction she's to move in, the, the, the transiting north node is exactly at the degree of her descendant. So at the, if she was a tree, it's at the root of the tree. I mean, again, this is so, it's just amazing alignment. And the transiting moon for um, the equinox time is at 15 degrees, conjunct her north node, one degree away from her IC. I mean, you just, it, people ask me, do you believe in astrology? And I say, no. Because you, how can you, you can't make this stuff up, <laughs> this kind of synchronicity. So, uh, you know, there's more, but that Saturn's on her sun. She has four planets in Capricorn, and I was listening to her today, and there is just, you know, it, it's so antithetical to the hype and the, the untruths that are coming out from the officials in top places. And she just calls it like it is. And she is being, the, she's the child being the grown-up, calling out the grown-ups for not taking responsibility. And she is, and she's galvanizing the planet. And wow. So Greta, thank you. And for everybody, because if she was just doing it by herself, it wouldn't mean anything either. But the response, and so we're all invited to look and see what it is and how it is that we uh, can um, participate and contribute. And one of the things she says is, you know, yeah, the planet's on fire, folks. You know, you don't go back to sleep. And so this is another thing that came through. Fire people wear protective suits to enter a burning building. We need and must engage our light body radiance to protect us from pollution and poison on all levels pervading planet Earth. Our power depends upon our degree of connection to the whole holy whole. Our responsibility and challenge is to not let the poisonous atmosphere penetrate our shielding of light and our deep dark core of presence. That is our beingness, our consciousness, clear, pure, and innately uncontaminated and perfect. We are not to succumb to the suffering and despair of the world. If we do so, we are all stuck in the quicksand and the mire, no longer capable of helping ourselves or anyone else. On to the solid grounding into the terrain of truth where the precious jewels of awakening and awareness wait for us to find them. We, the Sangha, that's the name for the sacred group, whatever sacred group, are here as and for each other to remind, inspire, uplift, and transform our precious human species from the caterpillar of commodification and consumerism caused by the illusion of separation into the butterfly of awakening into unity and oneness. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so if you're wondering why you came out tonight, I dare say that's why you're here. And um, yeah, let's start with uh, we're also honoring Thomas Berry, who I had the joy of having as a mentor for 20, almost 25 years. And um, he was like a grandfather to me. And uh, he has uh, four foundations for our time, actually five, but four, uh, we'll, we'll start with the one which is the wisdom of the feminine, which he uh, correlates with the Neolithic era. 
So we're going to start. <laughs> this came to me in 1991. It's uh, based on uh, an old gospel called Rock My Soul in the Bosom of Abraham. Only I call it Divine Mother Rock. And um, the chorus is, Awaken us so we can see you. Awaken us so we can heed you. Awaken us so we can receive you, O oh, Mother Divine. Awaken us, awaken us, awaken us, awaken us. So please come in on that. Okay. <laughs> are doing this together. We've had a little before, so they're pros. I'm just an amateur, and they're very patient with me. And thank you for being patient with me, too. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, let's see, what else do I want to say next here? Yeah, so that is the vision that we're moving um, into, you know, the breakdown of the caterpillar human. And we're moving into the human butterfly. And the human, H-U-E-M-A-N, is we as radiant rainbow beings. So the oneness embracing the totality of diversity and 
that we are the realization we're made of light. And you know, in Tibetan Buddhism, often Dakinis and realized beings leave behind only their hair and their fingernails. And they, they just vanish into the light from our perspective. And modern physics is now showing us that the, what we see as being you know, so real and the only real that is, is a fabrication. So a lot of the ancient wisdom is coming to us in new ways. That's the wisdom of science that Thomas Berry talks about, and that's being that we can draw on, and that's revealed to us all the many, many, many multitudes of galaxies beyond anything. When I was growing up, you know, somebody, well, where do you live? Oh, I live in Bridgeton, New Jersey. You wouldn't even think to think, say, or imagine, oh, I live on planet Earth, right? It wouldn't even occur to you then let alone <laughs> in a galaxy of a Milky Way, let a, to imagine that there's a multitude of galaxies. I mean, come on. We haven't yet, you know, grokked, really gotten what we're, we're learning. We're on the verge of that, which is really exciting. So the breakdown, the breakthrough's happening with the breakdown, but it's kind of in its infancy. So, um, yeah, and the wisdom of the indigenous people is another really important strand that Thomas Berry says that we need to integrate for this time. And, you know, wow, Standing Rock. We, I mean, every indigenous culture has so much to contribute. And this is really a time to open our ears and listen to that. So this next little piece, we're going to invite you, if you like, you can get up and move around and Another uh, Huichol, um, wonderful way of celebrating the earth, is dancing your prayers into the earth. So this next one is, this came to me. <laughs> okay, you want true confession? <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is going to be the frame drum one. This is the one that we're encouraging you to bring out your indigenous and move around or stand or stay in your own beat, you know, whatever. It's, a, it's kind of a long one. It all came in one piece. And it came after I was in a, a workshop with Barbara Han Clow, and she gave us an activation of DNA. And it happened in 1996. And I went home, <laughs> and I was literally on the throne in the bathroom when this came through. Every little bit of it. So it's, I, you know, I maybe changed a word or two, but other than that, it's it. And I usually move around, but I'm going to stay stationary here. And uh, yeah, Kevin's going to be roving, and we're going to have some drums. So really, let yourself go, you know? I, I would be, but then I can't be here and be doing this, you know? So the dream of Earth is waking. You can hear a call. The eyes of Earth are opening. We're learning to see. Tapestry unfolding of radiant energy. Connecting every fiber, every life form that we know. We're pieces in a puzzle. We're all meant to know. We each have a purpose, a place, a destiny to work and play together in divine harmony. We've been in a muddle, confused, unaligned. Now is the moment, yeah, now is the time. <laughs> Remember our passages that led us to today? Reflect on all the sages, what they had to say. Hear your inner guidance, flickers in your heart. Notice, notice, notice this vast universe. We are a vital part, evolutionary process, awareness being born. We are an essential link, a 
part of the song. The universe is singing her hum, making forms, reviving us to awakening, waking we can see. We each have a role to play in setting ourselves free. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Our dictators cannot function when we all unite. Our powers will provide us with a shielding of light. We can create miracles. We can change the tune, bring care and compassion back into the loom. Weave a fabric of love and delight, birth your talents, birth your dreams. We planetary efforts to replace our outborn ground genes. Because now we know the genes don't tell us what we're going to be. There is a higher power. We can listen and we can change what we've been given. But I'm digressing now, so we'll get back to looking to the cosmos, stretching to the stars, remembering our cousins in interstellar space. Yeah. There's consciousness that permeates each place. Every living creature, every blade of grass, gorgeous evolution to reach the human face. Gorgeous evolution can reach the human race. We can bring forth wonder. We can bring forth peace. Keep on going. Let your fears be noticed. Then let them fly away. This is the most important part. <laughs> Transform them into butterflies. Then they can lead the way to transformation so astounding. <laughs> we will one day laugh when we look back at ourselves and we didn't think we'd last. We'll savor cosmic humor. Irony so deep, truth reveals a wonder of multiplicity. Like the creeping caterpillar, we won't be no more. Yet we will be more fully than we ever have before. So spread your wings of wonder, join the cosmic dream. Awaken and fully rock our galactic destiny. Feel your full kinship with all of Earth's life. Glad to be resurrected in this awakened life. Butterflies of beauty bathing in the rain. Home is multidimensionality. This is our terrain. The crow is calling, the crickets coax. Wake up today completely, let go of the hoax. Follow your inner calling, wake up from the trance. Earth Mother's calling you to enter her dance. Dance her dream into awakening, join in her song. Release all your fears of something going wrong. This day is a new day. This time is a key. Unlocking many doorways to another way to be. It's not mere chance. Look to your courage. Dare to dance your dance. Look to your courage. Dare to dance your dance. Your dance. Your dance. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, wow. Thank you.
my wonderful gals, wonderful friends that had to get up very early this morning and have to get up very early tomorrow morning as well for coming out. It's called Humanity, again with a rainbow hue. And uh, yeah, it's an invitation for possibility. So, um, yeah, I'd like you to take a moment and just breathe in and let yourself feel that we're on the other side of this transition, that it's a done deal, that we've, we humans have done gone butterfly, that we have become the, the true humans that no longer are we divided by ideas of race or creed or ethnicity. we celebrating as all different gems. And that we really, really, that's our new identity. And just let that in. And as you, as you listen to this, because, yeah, there's that sense. It can be hard when things are falling apart. And they are. And they need to. But that doesn't make it easy, and especially when there's tremendous suffering involved. So we want to acknowledge that, but we also don't want to get stuck in the quicksand of the suffering and to know that there is more than what is happening that meets the eye going on. So that's what this song is about, is this new possibility. A topsy-turvy world is falling while a new one's being born We depart from conflict and worry Make a world where we all belong A new day's on the horizon
was a little, can you fix this? It kept drooping and I was distracted and I kept trying to. <laughs> so while he's doing that, here's a, here's a couple poems. Possibility is the papoose carried on the back of great mama earth as she spins into a new trajectory of unfoldment. We are the ones yeasted to rise, invited to lift our old ingredients into a transformative souffle of soul, for which there are no pre-existent recipes, only the yearning coated within us to hatch from the false shells of separation. Here, in the great in-between, Mother Magic is making the future now in the womb of the present. And so this, this is one of the primary points that's so exciting about Thomas Berry's uh, message, is that we draw from these four strands, this weave of the, the wisdom from the paleo Lithic, which is the earth, and which is um, the, the wisdom of the indigenous people, you could say, and the water, the women, you know, the wisdom of the women. The wisdom of his other thing is the classical tradition. So this would be everything from the poetry of Rumi to Beethoven to philosophy, all, you know, that everything in that stream that we call classical wisdom and the wisdom of science, which is what has allowed us to realize that there's all these other galaxies. But, and this is, the, this is to me the big punchline, there's never been a time like ours before. There's no precedent. Therefore, it's our creativity that's the weaver that's bringing together these four strands plus that which has never been here before in this way as it is now. That is our calling. And he, he, he has this wonderful story, you know, he, so it's back in whatever, the Middle Ages or someplace, a cathedral is being built. Somebody comes on the scene and says to one of the brick workers, well, what are you doing? Oh, I'm making bricks. And then, hmm, okay, goes to another guy, thinks, what are you doing? Oh, I'm feeding my family and I'm taking care of my kids. Okay. Goes to someone else, what are you doing? I'm building a cathedral. And our job is to be building this cathedral of recognizing that Earth is the cathedral and that just because it isn't built yet does not mean it's not going to be. So we can be like the workers on the cathedrals of the past, only the cathedral that is calling us now is uh, to do our, could you hand me that book, please? Right there, this is, um, yeah, he calls it the great work. This is our great work, is to build what he calls the Ecozoic Era, which he says is every bit an era like Paleolithic, Neolithic, it's, it's not just a millennium kind of change. It's a big deal. And that we're at this crossroads, this fork in the road now, between you know, what we're seeing playing out. He, I mean, he wrote this 20, 30 years ago, a long time ago he's been teaching this. And now we're seeing the commodification, the, you know, putting a price tag on the water, draining you know, our reservoirs to sell bottled water. And, I mean, we know the whole, you know, it, it's, it, that's why they're marching. That's why we're marching all over the place. But um, the good news is that there is this other alternative, and we can be the ones, because who else, if not you who, you know? So that's why we're honoring. He's just amazing. He was just uh, what, a, what a wonderful human being. And here's another short poem that I like a lot. It's called The Walking, Waking Earth. We are the earth walking. We are earth walking upon herself. We are walking earth. We are the earth waking. We are the earth cells awakening to ourselves as earth. 
We are the awakening earth. It's a new time, a new day. The old is crumbling compost. Mother Earth is regenerating a new crop of consciousness. We appreciate the gifts we're given, the present that we are, the future we are cultivating. We irrigate fields of possibilities with our visions of peace. The human caterpillar collapses into the chrysalis and the human butterfly emerges. We are the walking earth awakening. Yeah, that one came in 2010. And this is a quote by Thomas Berry that is just so profound because it gets to the root. You know, when we talk about separation, this is about separation, but he, he says it in such a way that we can hear it, I think, in a, a new. We are only talking to ourselves. We're not talking to the rivers. We're not listening to the wind and stars. We have broken the great conversation. By breaking that conversation, we have shattered the universe. All the disasters that are happening now are a consequence of that spiritual autism. Thomas Berry. Ah. Mm. Okay, so one more poem and then we'll go to another song. Another one of us. Super fractal, splendiferous parade of oneness is dressed in its favorite garb. Diversity, a.k.a. another one of us. <laughs> and what a wardrobe. Feathery flamboyance, hoofed heaviness, green-leaved castanets played by the wind, iridescent interiors of shells from the sea, the myriad of faces of humanity, waves of mystical awakening revealing the cosmic invitation to be living within each you and me. Freed from fetters of concepts outworn and a world of cynics fed up and forlorn, freed from the fears that eat up our bones, finally free to sit on our thrones, the royal seat within each heart that has come to know it is never apart from the infinite love that lies in the center. All we need is to remember. Divine trickery it is, so very clever, to hide the one that you're seeking under the covers of the skin and the body within your own soul while you are searching like a mole in a hole. When all of the time you're looking to get out, outside, there in your heart, deep in your soul, is the beloved, priceless, fragrant rose. In each and every one of us, the one we can't do without, we are invited to go in and no longer pout. Before the earth, before the stars, remember who you already are. Find the diamond within your own one of us. Know the cosmic joke is on you when you forgot that hue were the rainbow inseparable from the whole holy hole and you thought you were a mere mole in a hole. Free to laugh, we sing, we find the golden ring and realize each day is a spring. Joy reveals its home within your heart where the door is open, no longer to close. If we lived like this, what do you suppose would happen when we live to love, love to live, and love to love? How are we doing? Oh, good, we're still. <laughs> How are you doing, everybody? I know it's a lot at once. I, I just, so much I wanted to share, and, and my favorite modality to share is really in more of a workshop group situation where we would take pauses in between, and you'd be sharing about what this stimulated and everything. So, um, 
we have enough time. I want you to take a moment and find somebody to share with and to share something that inspires you. Let's go from the point of view that we all are aware of the things that uh, <laughs> are disturbing us, to euphemistically say right now, but to something that you feel inspired to be, do, share in some way. Okay? Thank you. I love that energy that happens when we share. You know, we're a lot like rocks. There's so much inside of us that is invisible until the rock is opened and we see the beauty inside and we're not invited enough to share what's inside of us, I don't think. So that was, I'm glad you did that. And I want to share with you this book, Anatomy of Woodstock, I, I wrote many, many, many years ago. And for all that you are here tonight, if you would like a copy and would like to just make a donation, you're welcome to do that. I have copies in the back. And uh, it's the 50th anniversary. <laughs> and um, it's in the, the, the book's in the Woodstock Museum now. Uh, there where the, it happened. And you know, I got, I lived in Woodstock for over 20 years and got to meet wonderful Richie Havens and in touch with his daughter on Facebook. She's calling on to be an activist and actually Richie and I were on the local TV show doing a show on astrology. He was really into astrology. But um, yeah, so it's back there and I hope you enjoy that. And I wanted to read this one little spot from it. Let's see. Because I think this is such an important reminder for now. Okay, if I can find it. I had brought a copy that I had earmarked, but I don't know where it is. Here it is, I think. Yeah, okay. Okay, now if we can be quiet for, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hard to, yeah. So um, I think this is important because, as we were saying, it can be really disconcerting when we see so many things falling apart. And it's easy to get uh, really into despair. But when we have a different context, it, it helps. So um, yeah, this came to me when I wrote this. I came out with this in 1994, I think. And it was, this just came through then, so this is, it's still fitting now. Deception, the old forms which can no longer accommodate the, our fresh currents of life energy are being dismembered from the tree. Limbs of dead wood are falling through the forests of society, community, and inner being to make room for the green branches to spread forth and grow. As the dead branches clamor to the ground, it appears that we are in the midst of even greater destruction and violence. How then can we speak of visions of earth without a fear and still claim sanity? Destruction is part of the cycle of reconstruction. As I were, is it Prigine? I always get his name. P-R-I-G-O-N-E. I don't know, we'll go with it. <laughs> As noted, we break down in order to break through. My teacher, Jean Houston, reminds us of the dinosaur effect. When the about to become extinct phenomena makes one last great burst of energy. We are not to be deceived by the intensification of violence around us. It exists, yet its existence must not detract us from our visions of a healed and holy planet. So if you like, please pick up a, a copy and that's at the back. And my CD's back there too, it's called Mother Earth Calls and um, yeah, there's some comments about it that are back there. I, I can't give that away, but uh, it's a sliding scale, 10 to 15 if you'd like one of those. So that's that. And we have a few more minutes. And would anybody like to just share something? Did anybody feel like the inclination if you do this is your time to raise your hand and share and if not we'll go on <laughs> okay 
Let's go with a prayer to Mama Earth. Did we do everybody a sacred already? Yeah. yeah. No or yes? I don't believe so. Did we do everybody a sacred? No. We didn't do that. Okay, so Brian Swim, who also had uh, Thomas Berry as his mentor, I wound up studying with him a lot too. And one of his most profound uh, teachings was that the most important sense that we have is a sense of the sacred. And that so much of our problem is because we've lost the sense of the sacred. So um, that, actually this, sto <laughs> this song started out as every, every number is sacred, but it morphed into everybody is sacred because I felt the message was more all-inclusive. I'm going to take a sip of water here. How about these two guys? <laughs> All right. So that's how this, what inspired this song. And um, yeah, the chorus is everybody is sacred, everybody's divine, everybody is sacred from the same great mind. Every human is sacred, every human's divine, every human is sacred, we are called humankind. So when you catch on, please come in. And this one's on the CD, but in a gospel version with the organ and the whole deal. Okay, here we go. Everybody is sacred.
We are called human so that this all could happen together. It's so appreciated. And we're almost to our last few minutes. So I just want to let people know if you have an organization, like I'm, I'm, in, um, I'm a minister, an omni-faith minister, and um, I, I feel ripe and ready to get back giving talks and sharing my music and poetry. And um, this is just a little sampling. I have a lot of it. And uh, so if you know of any groups, I'd love to do it. Or uh, astrology class and stuff. I just, the phrase comes, I just want to give myself away. You know, it's just, I just, you know, I'm at that place in my life. I feel like a cornucopia, you know, like a, with, a, with a stick, you know, hit the thing and open it up and let it, let it spill out. And um, my forte is not the, the uh, skill of, even though I've studied it, <laughs> of how to put myself out in the world. But I just want to let you all know that I'm ripe and ready. And uh, so if you know of any opportunities, let me know. And... Um, in workshops, like we, we, we were going to do a really juicy process tonight, but there's not time for it. That would have been a lot more interactive, but it's a really good one for um, a uh, workshop. So it's called Bless Your Body. We can do it really even. Just, just we're going to end with this. Okay? And what I'd like you to do is we're going to do this. I bless my body. I bless my mind. And we're going to do it first with the eye. You know, like on the airplane, you put the oxygen mask on first, because then you can help other people. So it's first with the eye. And then if you feel so inclined, I'd like you to turn to someone else, or imagine, and with the you. And then finally the we, the all-inclusive, right? And um, I'll, I'll, let's do it a little kirtani like I'll, I'll, I'll sing it out, and then you can echo it. OK. Um, okay. I bless my body, I bless my mind. Your turn. Bless my body, bless my mind. I bathe in the light divine. If you feel like turning to someone else, you can remind them. <laughs> Bless your body. Bless your mind. Bless your mind. Bathe in the light divine. You are love. You are light. You are the one who makes it all right. You're the one that makes it all right. And together now, all of us, we bless our bodies. We bless our minds. Okay. We bless our bodies. We bless our minds. We bathe in the light divine. Bathe in the light divine. We are love. 
light. We are light. We're the ones. We're the ones who make it, make it all right. Make it all right. And that even includes making mistakes, because you know what if. <laughs> Buckminster Fuller, one of his greatest, greatest teachings was that we have to be willing to make mistakes, otherwise we don't learn. Yeah, and I heard him say that, uh, he, that Swami Satchidananda said that he told him that, and that was one of his really valuable lessons, because I used to work in Omega, and Swami Satchidananda was there. So that was a good one, and I didn't mention, and I want to mention too, His Holiness Dalai Lama, when he's asked, what is religion? And he says, it's kindness. So may we leave with that. Let's circle up if you don't mind. All right. um, uh, and one last to take with. So thanks everybody. We're gonna release all this wonderful love and inspiration that we shared tonight for the benefit of all beings, yes? Yes. So that's our intention. We're thanking all the presence that's been with us. We're thanking these amazing musicians. Yes. We're yes. thanking Frisia and the Center for World Networking and the Ohlone peoples who are the indigenous people from this area and all the indigenous people that made this land what it is. And of course, Mother Earth. So we're leaving with Wait, wait a minute. Transmit love. Transmit love each and every day. Transmit love across every border. Transmit love across every border. Transmit love, all inclusive, none left out. Transclusive, all left out. Transmit love, all inclusive, none left out. Transmit 